Okay, so I understand that we lost, uh, we lost the feed, and so I'm not going to go back to the very beginning of the announcements, nor the beginning of the um, provincial housing announcement. I can confirm that council stopped any work until we were able to regain the feed. So what I am going to do is, is go back into the announcements. I'm going to simply state that I had listed nine of the rec 55 recommendations from the recently uh, released housing task force recommendations to the provincial government and proceed on from there. The refrain from the task force is familiar, cut red tape to permit faster construction and reduce costs. In view of the task force, and I quote, municipalities allow far more public consultation than is required, end quote. The changes proposed by the government's task force would increase density in suburban areas, such as Fort Erie and similar communities throughout the province, while reducing the influence of residents and local councils on how their municipality grows and manages that growth. These measures are far-reaching and tip the balance of development heavily in favor of developers and away from residents. They would strip municipalities of the ability to manage growth. The affordability in housing crisis has been decades in the making. For over 40 years, housing construction has been inadequate to meet need. The federal and provincial governments have failed to provide necessary supports for a range of housing, but particularly rental housing. In the absence of any national or provincial housing strategy, municipalities have begun to develop their own strategies. Changes to official plan and zoning provisions, adoption of policies directed at creating a range of housing, incentives, and partnerships to encourage construction of affordable housing units. Rather than neuter municipalities and limit public involvement in the development processes, the provincial government should be working with municipalities and providing needed supports to assist them in their efforts to protect neighborhoods and natural heritage. It should look at the host of policies and recommendations put forward by municipalities to address practices that escalate the pricing of housing and speculation in the market. We have in our agenda this evening a resolution from the City of Sarnia that calls on the provincial government to eliminate the Ontario Land Tribunal, which along with its precursor, the Ontario Municipal Board, has generally favored developers over the years. This would eliminate the right of appeal of local planning decisions but would rest responsibility for those decisions properly where it should be, the local municipal council. By establishing sensible planning policies to guide municipalities, and by monitoring those policies, the provincial government can ensure that development activity meets its objectives without creating the real potential for the destruction of neighborhoods and natural heritage in our communities. It is not necessary for every town and every city in Ontario to look like Toronto. And if you want to know how I really feel, just ask me afterwards. Um, so that takes us to um, addendum, addenda. There are two. One relates to um, the change in some of the uh, easements referred to in bylaw 14 for 2022, which is which is to exempt certain lands in plan M65 uh, from part lot control. That's the beach walk um, development uh, south of Michener Road and east of Schooley Road. And the second addendum relates to two um, new business um, inquiries, responses to inquiries from previous meetings. And those have been posted on our website and will be referred to by staff uh, when we get to that portion of the agenda. That takes us to declarations of pecuniary interest. Councillor Dubinow. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I have a uh, conflict this evening, 9.22G, uh, that is the uh, receive the Fort Erie SPCA Board of Director minutes from February 16th, 2022, um, as the company I work for performs contracted services for the Fort Erie SPCA. And that was on the consent agenda, Your Worship. Right, and that's 9.2. 2G, right. Uh, any others? 
Madam Clerk, I have a pecuniary interest with respect to delegation uh, B, which is 8B on our agenda, and also item 317 on the um, land committee minutes, which is item 10, CAO 03 slash LC 04 for 2022. And when we get to those two items, I will ask Councillor Dubinow to assume the chair so they can be dealt with, um, so that the delegation can be heard and that the um, item in the land committee minutes can be dealt with separately. Uh, if there are no other declarations, there is one upcoming public meeting that is a proposed zoning bylaw amendment, 28 Ridge Road South. That will be heard on Monday, March the 21st, 2022 at 6 p.m. And the information report for that um, public meeting will be held, will be available on our website on March the 16th, 2022 um, at 5 p.m. The regional councillor, I believe, is unavailable this evening. Uh, and so we're going to proceed with presentations and delegations. And the first delegation is uh, Chief Brian McCullough and Staff Sergeant Eric Elwood of the Niagara Regional Police Service. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Good evening. And gentlemen, do you have someone else with you? Uh, I believe um, our manager of corporate communications, uh, Ms. Stephanie Saverin, is going to work the uh, slide presentation for okay, us. Okay, perfect. Uh, please proceed, gentlemen. We appreciate you coming out this evening. Terrific, thank you so much. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor Redekop and councillors. Uh, truly appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to join you this evening and to share some insights uh, into the Niagara Regional Police Service. I'll keep my opening comments brief uh, before turning the presentation over to the district commander for Fort Erie, Staff Sergeant Eric Elwood, who I'm sure uh, most of you uh, have met and worked with. Uh, when we look at serving our community uh, as a command team, we really have three overarching uh, guiding principles, uh, providing assistance to victims of crime, uh, member wellness, and uh, community engagement. These are all three key priorities uh, for us as a command team. As we see the uh, continued lifting of uh, COVID-19 restrictions, we're very much looking forward to being able to resume uh, with community events and connecting with members of the community uh, that I know that our officers so proudly uh, uh, serve and protect. Uh, in, in reality, engaging with our community is where we learn what's happening and how we can work together to address issues that are taking place. Uh, in many cases, uh, learning about things that we may not otherwise uh, hear about. Uh, with me today, I'm joined uh, by Deputy Chief of Operations, Brett Flynn, uh, our two district commander, Inspector Mario Lagrateria, who provides oversight to uh, five district, uh, as well as Superintendent Marco Giannico, who oversees uh, all frontline policing across the region. They'll be in the waiting room uh, and available to assist with any questions uh, that uh, may arise. Uh, you may often hear me say that uh, I refer to the district commander who oversees uh, any particular district, in this case, five district, uh, as really the local chief of police. And they really should be uh, your first point of contact uh, when dealing with any local issue. Uh, I would strongly encourage you to connect with Eric and I'm confident uh, that he will be responsive to any questions or concerns uh, that you may have. Uh, having said that, I'll turn it over now to Staff Sergeant Eric Elwood for the presentation, um, but will be uh, available should there be any questions uh, following his presentation. Thank you. 
Thank you, Chief uh, McCullough, and for uh, Mayor Redekoff and councillors and other members of the town for you. Thank you very much for this opportunity to uh, speak for you, speak to you today. Uh, we're just going to cover a few things off regards to the Niagara Regional Police itself uh, before we move on to some specifics for our five district. As with any large organization, we certainly have a mission statement, which is uh, guiding principles for us and our members. And certainly we are dedicated to striving and protecting the residents and visitors within the Niagara Regional Municipality of Niagara. And in partnership with the community, we shall provide quality policing services with integrity, diligence, and sensitivity. It's something that we strive for. Next slide. Uh, as you're likely aware, a senior command structure consists of our chief of police, uh, McCau uh, Chief McCauley, who's on here tonight, as well as the two deputies, Deputy Chief of Police Operational Support, Brett Flynn, as well as Deputy Chief of Police Support for Services, uh, Bill Ford. Next slide. This is just an organizational chart of what our organization looks like. It's an overview of the current system that we have, and in, like in large organizations, it certainly shows the scope and breadth of what we have to offer to the members of our communities and what expertise that we have behind our officers. Uh, you can kind of relate this to uh, when an officer arrives to a call that there is a bevy of multiple officers that can assist them in different ways through an investigation. Uh, from our uniform perspective, we have over 700 uh, sworn members. It's a part of our authorized strength, which is 774. And that's broken down into the different parts of our uh, system with, through our rank structure. And we have 599 constables as well. On the civilian side, we have over 300 members, 326 members to be uh, precise, which are certainly uh, assisting us in many aspects of our organization. Next slide. This is just breaking down what you just saw a bit and uh, the organization is a snapshot of what we have here for uh, us in Niagara uh, from executive services to district operations, which is what Fort Erie falls under, under there, as you can see. Uh, we have certainly uh, operational support services and these services are, go above and beyond the number of specifically assigned patrol officers that assist us in complex, uh, complex investigations and uh, incidents that we attend to and such as we have with uh, domestic violence units and sexual assault units, uh, our homicide units. These are specially trained members that offer and assist our frontline members in regards to their investigations they have to conduct. We also have emergency services, which contain a Marine unit as well, play a pivotal role in actions around us, especially given the amount of water that we have, especially in the Fort Erie area. Um, as I said, you know, if uh, an officer attends a call for service and if it's a, a domestic type of situation and the individual who we wanted to arrest has gotten away, has run away, we certainly would activate a canine unit. That could lead to the domestic investigation unit assigning the, inspe the uh, investigators for that, which falls to their mandate, as well as we get a forensic services unit involved to take uh, photographs and collect evidence of a crime scene. And this could lead to other aspects of our organization that assist in investigating uh, different crimes that we have. So it's a snapshot of what is offered behind the scenes of what members of society or members of our community see as this the uniform officer. But behind them, there is a bevy of other specially trained officers that are waiting in the wings to assist them with different uh, investigative techniques. Next slide. This is just, uh, again, as you can see, there is some other aspects that we have in, in uh, our structure, uh, mainly in regards to uh, civilian side of things. We certainly have the corporate services and our technological services and operational support, which is certainly assist our frontline officers uh, quite a lot in regards to our communications unit, which receives the calls and the 911 aspect to it. And something that's relatively new to us is the um, RTOC, which is the Real-Time Operations Center, which is, uh, I know uh, myself and Inspector Legatary has spoken to Mayor Redikoff about that aspect for this uh, district. Uh, hopefully it's something that can be worked in the future, but is a, certainly something that's new to us and, and is uh, well supported in, in uh, investigation and helping us in the long. Next slide. Some statistical data just to show you across the 
what we have. As you can see, there is a, a jump there in 2021 to 2020, and uh, we saw a 17% increase. This is across the region. This is regional data for us. Um, we just want to put a couple caveats in here. Of course, we had a decrease in call uh, volume in 2020, and of course, it's during, due to COVID-19 and the pandemic. Um, but there is another caveat in the throw in here that uh, back in May of 2021, our comms unit began using a new set of priority dispatch codes, and they go from one to six. One, of course, being for anything that's imminent danger, life-threatening is the highest priority, and six being what we consider as a no dispatch uh, priority. This would be a type of situation where someone would call our comms department a unit about a certain situation, and that would be directed down to a staff sergeant to deal with via telephone. It could be anything from passing on information, giving advice, things of that nature. And we were tracking those uh, across our, our system. So we are doing that now. And with that caveat, in 2021, there is over 18,000 priority six calls region-wide. So we take that number out of it. Uh, we ha only have a 3.27% increase in calls for service between 2020 and 21, and actually a 1.13% decrease from the 2019 calls. Next slide. As you can see, five districts fall in the same pattern that we did across the region. We have the, the, the dip in calls between 2020, or sorry, in 2020 is the dip in calls because of COVID, of course. Uh, there's a 16% increase between 2020 and 21. But again, we take out the, the priority six calls out of this. We have a 6.25% increase between 2020 and 21. And again, a just over a 1% decrease between 2019 and 21. So it's kind of, as you can see, it went up and then we we're leveled off a bit between our calls for service. Next slide. This is trying to represent uh, between our two districts. And for just to reiterate that five district is divided into two different zones, a 510 zone and a 520 zone, which is divided by Ridgemont Road and uh, Sawmill Road is kind of the division lines. So we have an east side and a west side. Uh, the east side being 510 zone, which is the town of Fort Erie proper, as well as the uh, uh, rural area around it. And 520 zone, which incorporates Stevensville and Ridgeway and, and Crystal Beach, as well as the rural area around us. As you can see, the 510 zone calls for service are uh, much larger than 520 zone. Um, in 2021, the last chart there you, you see, there was over 5,300 calls in 510 zone and just over 3,000 calls in 520 zone. Again, we have the caveat of the priority six calls that come into play with regards to those calls for service. Next slide. Just some uh, general information in regards to some of the uh, issues. I know a property crime is certainly a, a, an issue in five district and just to show you the stats here in regards to that in the last three years, uh, there was over a 17% increase in break and errors, which is 31 reports. Um, we had a slight increase in theft from autos, which is just one extra report, 16% uh, increase in water vehicle thefts between uh, 2020 and 2021 with eight more reports, and a slight increase in robberies uh, between uh, 2021. Decrease, sorry. Uh, next slide. Just want to highlight some of the aspects that Five District has done in regards to crime prevention and community engagement. I know that I've introduced to uh, council last year, uh, Constable uh, Frank Gilly, who has been designated as a community engagement officer here at Five District, and uh, I'm sure some of you have heard his name or have dealt with him personally. Uh, just to highlight some of the aspects that he's done here, like he's, he has made contact with over 40 different community service providers and stakeholders uh, in and around the, the area, of course. Uh, he's dealt with several uh, citizens' complaints directly that come through my office to him that are specific, specific for him to attend to, which uh, he's dealt with quite uh, diligently. He's been a consistent liaison with the Fort Erie uh, Native Friendship Center. Uh, on his own, he's initiated a food drive uh, through Five District, um, as well as he's assisting with our current project we have with uh, donated winter apparel that uh, was started by another officer in Five District. And I'd just like to take a quick uh, thanks to uh, the citizens of uh, Fort Erie who's donated this stuff. It's been an overwhelming success for us. We've had members from uh, the community from Grinsby attend here to deliver stuff. So. And all the uh, donated materials that's come to Five District have been redistributed to different uh, social uh, services as well as other uh, districts to give out from officers. 
Uh, just want to highlight our Twitter account that is quite active, and this is what we use to present to the community in, in large regards to a lot of the initiatives that are being done from uh, traffic enforcement to uh, the community engagement that uh, Constable has done, as well as other officers that have done. Uh, it's a very important tool for us to pass this information on to the community to show that what we've done and what we are doing currently uh, throughout our district. Uh, to date, we have over 400 followers for that, which is uh, fantastic for us. It's been increasing, seems like, every, every month now. Uh, as just some of you are probably aware, I do uh, participate with the Traffic Coordinating Committee. Um, they have highlighted over 30 different uh, aspects of traffic problems. Uh, regarding from stop signs to speeding, which uh, just to relate to the council and the mayor that these are redistributed to the platoons in order to have direct patrol uh, in those certain areas and they're responsible for those uh, aspects. Uh, I know for traffic enforcement, uh, I know Mr. Mayor asked about uh, a few uh, what we've been doing. Uh, I just want to highlight that in 2021, we, we issued just under 1,400 uh, provincial offense notices for various offenses. Uh, and so far in 2022, uh, up to today, we've actually issued uh, 228 in comparison to the same time frame. 2021 was 176. So traffic enforcement is certainly a vital, important aspect of what we do here. And it's certainly an aspect of what we have to do as police officers. So we, we do take it seriously. Uh, with that, we actually have each platoon has to develop their own platoon initiatives, um, which is directed by me. And they're the to uh, work in community engagement and community issues. Um, some that we have done are what we call compliance checks for individuals who are released on conditions uh, after charges. Uh, we developed uh, information collecting uh, initiatives in order to gain information about certain residents uh, to see if any criminal activity are happening as we're reported to us by other residents. We had school crossing guard uh, initiatives done uh, we certainly had to lengthen our cottage check initiatives here at five district due to the ongoing restrictions that happened with our border during the pandemic uh, as well as another one is the summertime water park initiative where we had uh, directed patrol around uh, town water parks in order to be in a proactive measures for them and that's just to name a few uh, as i showed you in the, the um, organizational chart that we have different support services Five District does have its own criminal investigative branch, or CIB, uh, which is in-house here, which is, uh, contains of, uh, one detective sergeant, four detective uh, constables. Uh, they're mandated to follow up with various offenses, but they're here to support the officers on the road as well. And just to highlight what they've done in regards to the last year, you know, they completed or involved with 52 arrests, leading to 108 criminal charges. Uh, during the investigations, they executed over 30 criminal code search warrants as well as 17 production orders. And in 2021, they began to randomly change their schedules in order to do some uh, proactive plain coast patrol in various um, communities in five districts. Uh, last, just want to highlight the ATV initiative, which we have done in partnership with the town of Fort Erie. Uh, we initiated these due to the ongoing complaints in uh, off-road motorized vehicles and along the Friendship Channel and other parts uh, in our district. As well as in the summertime, we certainly offer the, the beach patrols for, again, for off-road motor vehicle issues, as well as certainly trespassing issues with developed with regards to property ownership along different beach properties. That's kind of a, a nutshell of uh, what we have done in five districts in the last year. Um, and I'm certainly open to any questions. Any Thank you very much, Staff Sergeant. And before I open this to, for questions, I want to um, reiterate, I know that Chief McCullough, you may not have been um, aware of the appreciation that we expressed to the Niagara Regional Police Services for their excellent work uh, a couple of weekends ago and, and, and the following weekend uh, when we had the, um, the protesters in town. Uh, Staff Sergeant Elwood and um, your um, Deputy um, Bill Forty were very, very responsive, the whole, the whole team, in fact, the members that you made reference to earlier participated in some meetings that we had, and the whole thing was very satisfactorily managed by Sergeant, uh, Staff Sergeant Elwood. And I also want to point out that he's been very, very um, effective in assisting us on some of the issues that counselors have been have brought to him, along with, um, um, he mentioned um, Ilya. What's, what's Ilya's rank, Staff Sergeant? 
The constable Frank Gillian. He's just a constable. That gentleman deserves a, a promotion, <laughs> if I might say so. Um, and then I'm going to get I'm going to get out of your hair, um, Councillor McDermott. You had some questions for um, our, our colleagues from the regional police. Uh, yes, thank you, and uh, I concur with the mayor with regards to protest day. You were all very awesome. You know, a number of years back, uh, you helped me out uh, when we were having home invasions in the north end of town. And we had a town meeting here with six or seven police officers. And subsequent to that meeting, um, the arrests were made and the home invasions uh, stopped, and I appreciate that. Um, I do, however, have some problems in the north end of town around the 5th Street and Amherst area. Um, that I get a little bit concerned about. I know that probably the mayor and councillor and Senna have talked to you about um, the speeding on uh, Pip Street. It's ongoing and it just never seems to end. And I, do, I really don't see a lot of uh, uh, attention paid to that area. The second thing is, um, over the past number of months, we've had um, some childish type of vandalism that's being done to uh, some people on Pip Street, which I'll be glad to send you an email, Sergeant, with, uh, with regards to that. But the big problem is uh, most of the people that live um, in, in this area where Pip Street, Amrick, where the school is, um, are older people um, in their 70s, most of them. And... Um, We've had uh, one guy call me the other day with five incidents of vandalism in his house, and he's, you know, just frustrated as heck about it. And uh, I know that if either uh, I, there's another neighbor who's also had it, and I know them personally, and had they been, you know, 25 years younger, it wouldn't be a problem. They would be out there and all over them, but they're 70 and 71 years old. And um, we can't have that. It seems to be the same ammo of the two people that do most of it. Uh, one's a tall kid, one's a little kid. But um, they like to pay attention to the school and people's backyards. And I, I know how easy it is to hide out there. But uh, uh, they were so frustrated, it was just beyond belief. Um, so it. If I could forward you an email on that, uh, I would appreciate your due diligence on that. Because when you get older, it's not easy just getting older, having the frustrations of vandalism, people vandalizing your house is, you know, just unfathomable to some people. And I tend to agree with them. So whatever you can do about paying attention to that area especially, um, they're bound to make a mistake sooner or later if they haven't already. But I will get you that information tomorrow. And like I say, I really do appreciate all the work that you do. And, uh, you know, as soon as you think you got it licked, that's when it happens again, right? So whatever you could do to help me would be great. Staff Sergeant, did you want to make any comments at this point, or do you prefer to wait to receive the information from Council McDermott? Uh, the information about the vandalism, yeah, I certainly will wait to uh, receive the email about that, and we can look into that. Regards to uh, traffic enforcement on Bibb Street, I know we spoke last year about the the issue, and we were we did have initiative there. It was quite lucrative for us, and we received uh, a lot of positive comments from citizens in and around the area. I can supply you with data regards to what was done there, and certainly it's something that's still being worked on today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, any other members of council? Councilor Zanko. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to Sergeant Elwood. Um, first of all, I want to thank you as well. Um, I've had a number of complaints uh, regarding speeding on Crescent Road and Buffalo Road. And um, it seems when the complaints come in uh, on a more consistent basis, you always send out officers to those locations. So I, I really do appreciate that. Uh, my question is, um, Sergeant Elwood, I'm wondering if you might be open to a conversation with me tomorrow. I'm having a, a very large issue uh, with a property on Craft Road, and I, I'm certain that you're aware of it. I'm not going to go into details during this meeting, but I just wanted to maybe have a conversation with you to see what we can do uh, just for the residents, because the residents surrounding this property, uh, they're not even comfortable living where they're living right now. So 
Um, just wondered if you'd be open to kind of a, a conversation perhaps tomorrow or sometime this week. Staff Sergeant? Certainly, Counselor. Whenever uh, you want to speak about it, that's fine. Excellent. Thank you very much. And thank you again for all your support. Thank you. Uh, any other counselors? Thank you very much then, gentlemen. We very much appreciate you coming out. And uh, I know that it's a large area to police. And I know that there are a variety of areas that you have to cover. And uh, the work never ends. But we're very much appreciative that you're always there. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, and at this point, I'm going to turn the chair over to Councillor Dubinow so that he can chair the meeting for the next delegation. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. So our uh, next delegation this evening is uh, Bruce Aitken, uh, 1789 Niagara Parkway, regarding uh, opposition to the placement of planted vegetation on municipal road allowances. Um, Mr. Davis, is he in the... Uh, Okay. Is is that is that who it is? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Davis. And thank you, Councillor McDermott. Uh, can everybody hear me? We certainly can. Um, do you have uh, access to a webcam that you can turn your video on for? I thought it was on. Uh, can everybody hear me? We, we certainly can. Um, do you have uh, access to a web? Hang on a second. I thought the camera was on when I tested it earlier. We, we can definitely hear you. Well, that's, there, hang on a second. There we go. See we see you. Oh, cool. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I assume I'm speaking to uh, Mr. Aiken? You are. Excellent. Please proceed. Um, this is going to be a very short presentation tonight as um, uh, the town, the bylaw that I researched is, is very clear. Uh, first of all, let me s preface this by saying that the reason we purchased the property is 1789 Niagara Parkway was one of the reasons is because of the excellent view we have the Niagara River. Um, however, uh, the resident at 1799 um, Niagara Parkway next door to us over the last few years has been planting a number of trees on the road allowance. We, my wife and I are unaware of what the rules were and uh, a, friend of, a friend of ours told us not too long ago that uh, this was not to be done and there was a bylaw about it. I researched the bylaw and found bylaw 8907, which states no person shall place or permit to be placed any fence, tree, shrub, hedge, landscape, berm, vegetative plantings, or other structure or object within a municipal road allowance, except with permission granted in accordance with the municipal road allowance encroachment policy. Please contact the town prior to placing any of the above on a town road allowance. Now we have no objection to trees being planted. However, we do have an objection with trees being planted within our view of the Niagara River, uh, going from the back of the front house to the front of the house. This is what we have an objection with. Um, unfortunately, we do not have a working relationship with the resident of 1799 uh, Niagara Parkway, uh, and which is his choice. So therefore, I looked up the bylaw and proceeded to um, make a complaint to the town of Fort Erie. A bylaw officer came out and marked off the uh, western edge of the road allowance, et cetera. And here we are. We, he's planted somewhere on the road allowance. We've counted upwards of about 60 trees altogether. Uh, we do, however, have a proposal, which I believe is in front of council, and it is this, we would like to see the vegetation that has been planted removed 
whether it's cut down, dug up and replanted elsewhere, uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we would like to see the vegetation that has been planted removed to a, from a point on the service road back 105 feet. Uh, I believe um, the members of town council have been given a, uh, a diagram I, I took off of Niagara Navigator and kind of put hatch marks on it, indicating the area that is under question. Uh, anything past the 105 foot mark, we don't have a problem with. Um, and, and of course, that, that, is, that is up to the, the town of Fort Erie, town council and the town of Fort Erie, if they wish to approve that. We don't, we don't have a problem with that part. It's just the section of land um, at the southern edge of service road number two, going back 105 feet, and then going across to the other side of the road allowance, which is a distance of about 66 feet. Um, there's also a big blue spruce out front that uh, is going to get bigger, and we, we would like it removed as well, along with some of the others. I believe there's about six or seven or eight trees that, that are in question. There could be upwards of 10, I'm not sure, but it could be seven or eight, nine or 10. It, it, it doesn't matter. It's really at a point from uh, 105 feet back from the southern edge of um, service road number two. And uh, I believe that's my presentation. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Aiken. Um, You're do uh, just hang on a moment. Um, do any members of council have any uh, questions for Mr. Aiken this evening? I don't see any hands up, so I think you're off the hook. Oh, cool! <laughs> thank you very much for coming out this evening. My pleasure, and thank you for listening to me. I appreciate it. No, well, thank you. I hand the chair back to you, Your Worship. Thank you very much, Councillor Dubonow. That takes us to the next delegation, which is Riley Zimmick and Catherine Rogers, who are the co-chairs of the Fort Erie Coalition on Diversity and Inclusion. Right, and I understand they have a presentation as well. And they have a presentation as well. And they have a Hello. Good evening. Good How are you, Mr. Zimmick, Ms. Rogers? Hello. Nice to see you. So we're ready whenever you folks are ready and wanting to proceed. Okay, one sec. Can everyone see that? Yes, we can. Perfect. So I just want to say thank you to everyone for giving us some time tonight to discuss our survey results. I know we met in, I want to say it was either August or September, and we did a brief in, an introduction to the work that we were working on at the time. Um, Catherine and I and the rest of the group have uh, put a lot of time and effort into this uh, and come up with various sorts of questions. Um, and throughout this presentation, you'll get different diagrams and graphs and uh, results from it. We picked and chose. Um, what was most important. And at the end, we have some recommendations on what we think can make Fort Erie a better, uh, more diverse and inclusive place. So to start out, uh, we had approximately 50% of the respondents were 50 plus years old and 42% between 30 and 49 years, leaving a noticeable, noticeable gap with people under 29 years of age. And two thirds were female, 55% were employed, 25% retired, with self-employed, unemployed, and students making up the remaining 20%. Incomes were split almost evenly between the seven options, which were all split between zero to 20K and onward, um, with 40 to 60K being the highest. Uh, we had 106 people complete the survey. With, with uh, We were using Let's Talk Fort Erie as our um, way of distributing the survey as long, uh, and uh, we also used paper. Okay. Good evening, Mayor Redekop and members of council. Um, what you see in front of you here is a chart that represents the answers to the question, in Fort Erie, have you experienced or witnessed discrimination or unfair treatment by others because of? And um, there were 15 different reasons given 
And um, the, the bars indicate how many people um, chose each reason. The highest reason was um, 38, where people said they had not experienced or witnessed discrimination or unfair treatment by others. However, you will note that there are 14 other reasons there that other people had experienced or witnessed discrimination or unfair treatment. Of note, the highest is of race at 36 responses. And the second highest was ancestry, ethnicity, or culture at 35. The third highest reason was a housing situation in this, in, and what that meant was if people were receiving assistance with rent or were living in a so-called low income area or in a certain part of town. Um, it's also noteworthy the 14 different ways that people felt they had witnessed or experienced discrimination. On the right hand side of your screen, you'll see a pie chart. And what this indicates are answers to the question, how long ago did these incidents happen? And so we had 66 responses here and 95% uh, of the incidents happened 10 years ago. However, 84% happened five years ago, indicating that these incidents are of a current nature. And so an issue that um, we have captured in our community. Fort Erie services. Um, so our question for this was, does Fort Erie offer enough services that will help racialized communities feel more comfortable and want to stay to work, live and play in the town? Um, i.e. Transfer, transfer or transit services, mental health and medical services, community centers, group and sport activities. As you can see on your right, the graph identifies that 21.5% declared yes. 39.3% um, said some but needs improvement. 21.5% said no. And 17.8% said I don't know. Uh, from, from what our coalition has came up with, a lot of what we agreed on was there are a lot of services that we have in town. It's just, we need to find a way to promote these services more effectively and allow um, maybe to utilize the town to promote these services and um, places that have a lot of like uh, traffic and people that come through. So how can we look at possibly doing this in the future? And I know I recently received, um, it's kind of like a brochure, um, services that the town offers or has. And uh, unfortunately, the Native Center wasn't able to get in there, um, but maybe next year we can. And we just look at, we're looking at ways maybe we can maybe advertise more efficiently in the town. Question 18 asked, do you believe that systemic discrimination exists in Fort Erie? And as this term systemic discrimination used the definition from the Ontario Human Rights described as patterns of behavior, policies or practices that are part of the structures of an organization and which create or perpetuate disadvantage for racialized persons. So the responses on the right-hand side indicate that 47% felt that yes, they believed systemic discrimination exists in Fort Erie. However, 25% said no, and 25% said they did not know. So um, moving on to the next slide, where the question is asked in a slightly different way, have you experienced or witnessed systemic discrimination in the town of Fort Erie? 
And there the responses are a little bit different in that 34% say yes, while 49% say no. So what this could indicate is that while a lot of people believe that systemic discrimination exists in Fort Erie, only 34% have actually witnessed it or experienced it, whereas 49% said they have not witnessed or experienced it. However, for those who feel, believe that the systemic discrimination exists, perception for them may be reality, even although they may not have experienced or witnessed it themselves. Um, on the right-hand side, the question um, is probed further. So thinking about the last time you experienced or witnessed discrimination, where Yeah, you've just frozen up, Catherine. Looks like we've lost it. This is the gods telling us we should all be back here in the chamber. Local stores. Um, the other areas that were indicated was housing, which supports the finding that we found in the previous question, and also, unfortunately, at town hall and the library. Town hall got six responses and the library one. So um, not shown here on our slides is a further question. How did you respond the last time you experienced or witnessed discrimination. And 33 people responded. 23 of those people said they talk with family or friends. 13 discussed the issue with the business, school, organize or per organization or person involved. Only two did a formal complaint one to town hall and one to the police. One of the comments was, I need help with my discrimination. And so what we saw here was a person who did not know where to turn to handle the situation. Whereas others, they felt that they could handle the situation themselves. And so they tried to do that. However, the data does not tell us how successful or how satisfactorily that issue was resolved. The fact that 23 people say they talk with family and friends shows that these issues are being kept within their personal networks. And the fact that only two people did an official complaint suggests that these complaints are not reaching the public sphere. So in a sense, it's a bit of a hidden issue. Next slide. Town efforts. How would you rate the town of Fort Erie's efforts in addressing racism and discrimination? Um, we had six and a half percent say excellent, 11% say very good, 15.9% say good, 14% fair, 17.8% poor, 5.6% very poor, and 29% saying, I don't know. Um, we believe the town's efforts could be better, and um, we're hoping to address that in uh, the coming slides. Comfort, please indicate your agreement slash disagreement with the following statement. I feel comfortable living in Fort Erie as a community. So 42% said strongly agree, 36 somewhat agree, 9% um, neither agree nor disagree, somewhat disagree, 9.3% um, as well, and 2% said strongly disagree, while 4% preferred not to answer. This one to me was concerning. I would like to see the strongly agree much higher, and this is as, um, as a group, as our coalition agreed, 
Uh, we should see much more green here. We want to see people comfortable in their homes and their communities and out shopping, doing whatever it is they might be doing. Um, the, this should not be the case. We should have a much higher um, comfort level in our town and Fort Erie. This is something we believe needs to be addressed. So based on our discussions of these survey results with our coalition members, and um, the coalition's mandate itself to assist the mayor and council by providing advice, best practices, and recommendations on how to build a better Fort Erie where diversity and inclusion exist for everyone. Uh, we came up with these recommendations. They are also based on existing bylaws and directives at the town regarding accessibility and universal inclusion. So our first recommendation is that council commits to hiring a new CAO with equity, diversity, inclusion skills and experience to continue the work started in this area for the benefit of the town of Fort Erie workplace. That council includes equity, diversity and inclusion as a pillar in the town of Fort Erie's next strategic plan. And we recognize that present council cannot tie the hands of a future council when the next strategic plan is developed. However, we do hope that some members who are sitting around the table tonight will be part of the next council and will carry forward this recommendation. And the third one is that council directs the new CAO to develop and implement an equity, diversity, inclusion plan for the town of Fort Erie by the end of 2030. We see this recommendation as a natural outflow from um, having EDI as part of a pillar in the strategic plan. And these three recommendations are designed to help make the town of Fort Erie a leader in the area of EDI in Fort Erie. The remaining two recommendations are that uh, the Town of Fort Erie provides professional development training for Town Council and all Town of Fort Erie employees, along with the members of our coalition, to further their knowledge of EDI by the end of 2023, um, which would also tie in that the Town of Fort Erie partners with other community groups to sponsor EDI educational workshops to demonstrate leadership in the area of EDI and to increase awareness of the importance of such initiatives for all organizations, public and private in Fort Erie. Uh, one of our members, Martha Mason, has already reached out to the Chambers of Commerce and said they are more than willing to partner with the Town of Fort Erie in these workshops. So there's already been some sort of uh, legwork done. Questions? Yes, thank you very much, um, Riley and Catherine. That's excellent. And um, I think the recommendations really are... Um, very, very helpful in, in assisting us in identifying some of the things that we can do to become a more diverse, um, um, equitable, and inclusion, inclusionary community. And I want to thank your efforts and those of your colleagues on the um, coalition. You've done a lot of work. This is an excellent tool for you and for us moving forward. Um, are there members of council that have any questions? So um, you've obviously had us spellbound, and you've, the recommendations are, are absolutely uh, extremely helpful. And they will, I'm sure, assist us going forward for the balance of this term and for the new council, um, whoever may be on it, going forward next year. So thank you very much for coming out this evening and providing this information to us. Thank you. You're very welcome, and thank you for listening to our presentation, Mayor Redekop and members of council. Good night. Good night. Good night. That then takes us to our final uh, delegation, that would be Li Jia Lin, with respect to 4152 Erie Road. Well, find out if that's who it is. Sure. Sure. Yeah. 
Yes, thank you very much, uh, Riley and Catherine. That's excellent. And um, I think the recommendations really are um, very, very helpful in, in assisting us in identifying some of the things that we can do to become more diverse, um, um, equitable, and inclusionary community. Thank you for your efforts and those of your colleagues on the coalition. You've done a lot of work. This is an excellent tool for you and for us forward ms lynn um, are there members of council if you have the if you have this on if you're live streaming it you'll need to turn it off otherwise we'll oh, be hearing okay. echoes yeah okay and you are lee Xiao lin yes i'm lee Xiao lin good evening hi and you wanted to address us with respect to 4152 erie road yes please do so okay uh, i would like to share my screen go ahead Okay, so can any can everyone see my screen now? Yes, we can see the um, that's the concept of the proposed building. Okay, all right. So good evening, uh, members of council, uh, town staff, and the ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you for providing me um, this opportunity to make this presentation. Um, my name is Lixia, and I'm the owner of four one five two Erie Road in Crystal Beach. Um, my agenda tonight is to uh, ask the council to reconsider the land committee's uh, recommendation. Um, my original proposal was to extend the repurchase option for six months, but uh, with my current progress, um, I think that one or two months extension should be sufficient to finalize the site plan agreement. So as you can see uh, from the email exchange here, um, I submitted the full application package uh, for Cypren approval on December the 9th uh, last year. And I received the first submission comments from the planning department on January uh, 27th this year. So since then, um, we work with our designing team and there were some emails uh, back and forth with the planning department for comments. On February 24th, uh, that's last week, we submitted our latest version of the site plan and it was compliant to the zoning bylaw and the urban design requirements. Um, I will provide you some details uh, step by step here. Okay, so as you can see, um, according to the first submission comments, um, the maximum density um, should be 60 units per hectare and there should be three meters privacy area. So on our um, latest submitted drawing, um, we have um, the maximum um, density um, is less than 60 units per, per, per hectare. And we have uh, balconies on the second and the third floor um, they provide three meters privacy area. And uh, according to the um, first submission comments, um, the upper level windows should be embedded in the roof slope in the form of dormer. And this is our latest design of the windows in the form of dormer under the roof. Okay, so according to the first submission comments, um, we should have 17 par parking space. And there's also a dimension uh, about the par par parking space uh, outdoor and also in the garage. So in our latest site plan, we have 18 parking spaces and a bike rack. And the dimension of the outdoor parking spaces um, has shown up here and it also meet, it, it meets the requirement and also the garage, the dimension of the garage meets the requirements too. So we should show on the drawing that the building is three meters away from the right of way uh, to, okay, three meters away uh, from the right of way for Erie Road. Okay, so 
in, in our drawing, we reflect that uh, it's more, more than three meters from the right of way for Erie Road. So the building, uh, the roof uh, should be low in slope. And there's a ratio for the uh, roof uh, slope is it should be uh, one to five. And on the drawing, the rate ratio is one to five. So from the above slides, you can see that we met the requirements from the first mission comments. And we also have some uh, email exchanges with the town staff about the landscaping and site, ser uh, site servicing. We agreed on the tree preservation plan and we agreed to provide high quality landscape treatment for this site. We also agree on the tree, um, the, um, the, the selection of the trees, the fence, and the garbage storage treatment on the site. So after all of these, uh, all, all of these discussions, we gave, our, uh, we gave very clear instructions to our engineers. The new plan from them will exactly reflect all of these I, I items mentioned above. So as you can see, we are very close to the finish line of the site plan approval. Um, we have tried our best to meet all the requirements. Now it's up to the planning department schedule to finalize everything. So from day one, I understood that uh, this site would be a landmark for the um, for a town. And uh, that's why I hired two designers and we came, we came up with three designing plans. Eventually, we settled on the current one because um, it has coastal looking and it blends with the building style in Crystal Beach very well. So our target is not just for uh, a drawing, but to build. Um, as we all know, um, this site has a very high wa water table. To make sure everything works fine, when we build, we went uh, one, one extra step. So as you can see on the side here, we invited engineers to join the design team at the very beginning. The people we hired had experience with high water table. So the design you saw today for the site plan approval was not just, um, was, was not just everything we have done. We already had drawings uh, for the footings and foundation. And this is what we did last year. Um, we will revise it uh, to match the new de design uh, sub submitted uh, last week. So these are the working drawings for the build building permit. And this is also a working drawing for building permit. The reason why we went one extra step is to make sure that the site plan we provided to the town should work for building. And it took us longer to coordinate our everyone in the team and came up with the final site plan. However, um, this made us confident that down the road, um, there won't be any, prop, uh, uh, any issues. Um, so if I could uh, also make you feel confident too, um, we have a very experienced uh, construction lawyer on board who has done many big Pro project in Niagara, Toronto, and internationally. The designer we hire um, has been doing almost all the townhouse work uh, for ma major builders, big builders in Niagara. And we have also engineer, uh, and, uh, engineers that have experience uh, in high water table and gave us detailed step-by-step -step instructions regarding uh, excavations, uh, backfill, and pavement structure design. And any e issues we'll encounter uh, when we do the uh, town townhouse construction. So this, is, uh, this is, it's experience is very precious. And uh, we will also hire the same engineers um, um, to, to come, come to the site uh, when we build. So, so we make sure that uh, we are doing things properly. So I feel sorry that, uh, um, you know, it, it took so long and, uh, um, you know, it's kind, 
um, is kind of delayed for a year. But as you can see, um, we have done so much for this site um, and, also for, and, and also for this project. Um, during COVID lockdown, um, everyone in the construction business is so busy. So everything is very slow. Um, just give you an example. So we contact six engineering firms um, in Niagara last year. But after wait, waiting for a responses for four months, only two of them replied to us. And they said that uh, they are too busy. They, they, they cannot take our case. So if we eventually went to Toronto. So please understand that uh, it's not just me that who tried to delay, but it's because that uh, everybody is so, um, is so busy, so, so it's very slow. Um, so as mentioned above, um, last week, we have submitted our latest site plan, um, uh, uh, latest site plan design um, that met the requirement from the first submission comments. So I think that if we could have two months extension for the planning department and also for us to finish the process, you will be really appreciated. So thank, thank you so much for your time and, uh, and thanks again for, for giving me uh, this opportunity to present in the, meet, uh, in the meeting. Thank you very much, Ms. Lin. Are there any members of council that have any questions? And I, can you, could you unshare your screen, please, so that I can okay. see all of the councilors who are zooming in? While we're doing that, um, I guess I should let you focus on that before I go to Councilor Dubinow. Thank you. Councillor Dubineau. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. And uh, through you to uh, Ms. Lynn, thank you very much for your uh, presentation this evening. I'm just wondering if you can refresh my memory. Um, it's been a little while, and uh, it was pre-COVID when we originally dealt with the sale of this property. Um, I recall um, something that was proposed that, that had a, uh, a commercial component, and I'm, I'm seeing something tonight that is just strictly residential. I'm just wondering, what, when did that change and, and what's going on there? Because I'm, I'm a little confused. This, this, wasn't, what, uh, this wasn't what I originally was, uh, thought was intended for the property. Ms. Lynn? Yeah. Uh, well, we did the three de designing plan, okay? So the first one is the commercial and residential mix. Um, the re reason why we changed oh. that uh, from the commercial residential mix, that's a con condo apartment, to the townhouse plan now, uh, was because that, uh, you know, after COVID, I was afraid that people didn't want to share the elevator. So that's why we changed that to the condo, uh, um, uh, the, com uh, the commercial uh, re uh, residential mix condo apartment to the townhouse. And, and if I'm I may sure continue, yeah. so so what I'm hearing then is um, you're you're proposing a, a strictly residential building on on the commercial essentially the commercial corridor of, of Erie Road. Is, is that what I'm I'm hearing when it was originally supposed to be a, a mixed use building? Well, uh, the zone zoning here allows for um, uh, four four options. Okay, one is the commercial residential mix. Uh, the second one is for the condo apartment, and well, so, so, sorry, yeah, it's for apartment. The third one is for townhouse, and the the fourth one is for a hotel. So, so I have four four options. Okay, uh, thank yeah. you very much. You you answered my question. Thank you. Any other members okay, of council? Yes. Ms. Lin, so you've now had the um, I believe that there was one extension granted to the uh, purchase agreement? Is that correct? Yes, yes, please. So, so this, would be this, this would be the second extension? This will be a second extension, and uh, uh, we didn't expect that we would have a second uh, extension, okay? Um, after the first extension, uh, we worked with the en engineer, and he came up with, uh, um, with the full footing and also the foundation. 
and uh, uh, we had to coordinate with our uh, with with our designer, okay, to come up with the fun final plan. So uh, we submitted the the final plan. I think that that was uh, on December the 9th. So um, the first extension is till when was that? So two months after the first extension, we submitted our. Um, our site plan approval. So that's December the 9th. So I thought, um, you know, we we have three months and uh, we should get approval in, in three months. So um, I didn't expect that it would take so long. Okay. So at that time, I thought that we have at least three three months to get this approved. But, uh, you know, we, we re, re received the first comment on January um, uh, 2024th. Okay, so that's uh, that's almost uh, you know one one month and a half after our submission, and then you know we work on some um, some 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 emails back and forth, so that 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 also takes us a, a month uh, to to figure out everything out. Okay, so now um, we we had uh, a second edition of our design. So, um, and then we already submitted that, uh, that design on February 24th. So that's last week. And uh, we, uh, we try our best to meet all the requirements from the first um, uh, submission comments. So I hope that, uh, you know, if we could get that approved in a week, we don't have any, um, we, we, we don't have to have any uh, extension, okay? But just in case that uh, uh, there's some fee feedback and, and coming back and forth. So if the town need uh, um, a month um, to get this approved, then we probably will need one month extension. But uh, I think that we are very cl close. You know the 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 drawing I just show you it already met all the re okay, Ms. Lin. I, I, I yeah, I, I asked you if this was the second extension, and you said yes. yes and so just let me ask you again, uh, or another question, and that is, are you now planning to phase in this development as opposed to construct it all at once? Um. So so we have our working joint already. So we will um. We will uh, submit the application for the build building permit very soon. Okay, so we will we will build the uh, the one on on the front first, and then we will uh, okay, okay. So we we actually had the design for the one on uh, on Isu as well. So uh, we should build that very soon. Okay, just right after this. But it sounds like it, this will be phased in then, from what you're saying. Yes, originally we want to do the condo uh, townhouse on Erie Road and then freehold uh, on uh, on on Eastwood, but now it seems that we we should probably do the condo townhouse on on e, uh, on the e, Eastwood as well. So we probably will build them at the same time. I'm sorry, I didn't get that last part. You will probably. So we probably will do the condo uh, townhouse on, on East Road as well, okay? So we don't have to do two, two phase. But now, you know, we have a design for the one on Erie Road. Okay. Any other members of council have any questions of Ms. Lin? If not, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Okay, and so before we go to the um, consent agenda, and Councillor Butler, I understand you have the resolution for the consent agenda, so that would be for all, all items except 9.2.2G, uh, unless there are any other items that uh, anyone would like removed from the consent agenda. And if not, before we go there, I just want to acknowledge that this is the final, final council meeting, regular council meeting for the CAO, Tom Cookett. He will be leaving the chambers whenever this meeting is over. And uh, <laughs> the, next time, the next time he comes back, it will be either as a visitor, uh, a delegate, or perhaps as a janitor. <laughs> so, Councillor Butler, um, is there anyone else that wishes anything removed from the consent agenda? If not, um, Councillor Butler, I know that we all 
wish Tom the best of luck. And uh, we've, we've, he's been given a fishing trip expedition. Uh, the staff members contributed to that. So he'll be out fishing. Yeah. Councillor Butler, over to you. Thank you. Congratulations, Tom. Um, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Zanko, that bylaw number 23-2022, with the exception of 9.2.2G, uh, to confirm the actions of Council at its special and Council meetings held on... Wait, is that the right one? No, it's not. Sorry. Council, sorry. Moved by myself and seconded by Council... Councillor Zanko, that council approves the consent agenda items with the exception of 9.2.2G as recommended. Are there any questions or comments? So I'm just. Uh, Councillor Luberts. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Redekop. Uh, just on the uh, the um, item D, the uh, firearms from uh, the Thorold down city of Thorold. Yes. Um, I just I don't have a problem with the uh, resolution, but I just wanted to get. A little more clarification on the first that do they want um, sentencing to be um, stiffer? Are they talking about the illegal importation, produ production, and distribution of firearms, or both illegal and legal? Because it just says. Well, it wouldn't be, it would be a stiffer penalty for an infraction, which would mean someone who had violated the law. So it wouldn't relate to legally uh, owned firearms. Is that the question? Yeah, yeah. Can we get some clarification that it's just illegal importation, production, and distribution? Well, it would have to be, if it, it would only be an infraction if it was a firearm that somebody shouldn't have or was doing something with a firearm the that uh, the law would not permit. Otherwise, a person with a legal permit to uh, own a gun or carry a gun wouldn't be committing an infraction. So this would only be for violations of the law. Can we get that clarification from Thorold? Well, we, we can, but it'll be the same yeah. interpretation. I mean, if it's, if it's yeah, an infraction, like it's an infraction. Thorold, if it's you know, not a, a violation, it's not an infraction. Yes, I understand, Mayor Redekop, but what I'm asking for is clarification from Thorold. Okay, Madam Clerk, if you would be so good as to uh, contact the clerk in Thorold and find out if the law is different in Thorold than in Fort Erie, that would be great. And then we no, can pass that to the members of council. Clarification, Mayor Redekop, that they're specifically talking about illegal importation because there is legal importation as well. Okay, we, we, I've directed that to the clerk and she will, she will follow you. up with that, Councillor Luberts. Are there Thank any other you. questions that you have with respect to the items in the consent no. agenda? Thank you, Mayor Redekop. Did you have any other questions? No. Okay. Um, anyone else? So I did circulate in, uh, during the last council meeting, council and committee meeting, Councillor Noyes had raised the issue about uh, stormwater management ponds, and I did circulate to members of council an indication that there had been a resolution passed in September, and that uh, basically was that staff be directed to review the town's policies regarding the construction, location, and maintenance of stormwater management ponds with a view to making these fundamental facilities not only functional for the growth of the municipality, but also attractive and useful as neighborhood amenities, and further that staff provide a report to council as soon as practical. I'm not sure that addressed Councillor Noy's um, concern about whether we were also going to be looking at, uh, aside from maintenance, also construction and location. Um, Mr. Walsh, is this something that's in your realm or is this in the planning department's realm or is it a, is it a combination? Uh, Mr. Mayor, it is a combination. I believe okay. planning is uh, leading it, but uh, uh, neither one of us have done anything on the file yet. Okay, we, so we do I'm, expect it soon. Okay, great. 
And of course, we've got um, an acting uh, director of planning, and so we're short staffed there as well. But it would certainly be appreciated if we could um, move forward on that. Uh, the other, and thank you very much, Mr. Walsh. The other um, question that I had with respect to the South Ridge Meadows approved draft plan, having had an opportunity to look at the um, great elevations for the various models of homes that they're going to put in, they're quite modern uh, looking uh, homes, a lot of glass. And I'm wondering whether the bird friendly um, provisions that we have would be applicable to this type of development. And uh, Mr. Hurlovich, I don't know whether you're able to respond to that. Um, and I'm sorry that I didn't give you an advance notice. Uh, yes, thank, thank you, Your Worship. I believe the, uh, the amount of glass had to do with higher um, buildings, but I will double check on what the uh, criteria on that um, amount of glass is. But I, I believed it was higher buildings rather than um, um, one or two story buildings uh, as in um, the proposed development in this uh, subdivision. Great. If you could circulate something to council, I'd appreciate it. Absolutely, I'll do that. And then, um, finally, with respect to uh, the city of Sarnia, I think what I'm going to be doing is moving a separate motion regarding the Ontario Land Tribunal. Um, Mr. Hurlovich has provided some advice with respect to this, and I think uh, maybe it needs a little bit more consideration before, um, before we do any action on that. So if there are no other questions with respect to the items in the consent agenda, I'll call the question regarding the recommendations. All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. And then Councillor Butler, if you would be good enough to do um, approval for item 9.2.2G, then we can deal with that as well. Okay, thank you. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Zanko that Council approves 9.2.2.G on the consent agenda items as recommended. Are there any questions or comments on that item? If not, all those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. That then takes us to uh, the reports, and the first resolution deals with report CAO 28 um, LC 20 for 2021. Um, I want to make sure that I have a I have declared a pecuniary interest on the next set of minutes. Just want to, I just want to make sure that that's where the discussion took place. And I best... Uh, Right, so I sh Madam Clerk, I should also have declared a conflict with respect to item 1-5 on the minutes of December 2nd, 2021, and I probably declared a conflict uh, before when it was before council. So that would be item 1-5 of the report CAO 28 LC 20 
2021. And counts, hmm. So that's already on the floor, and I believe I already declared a conflict on that. So this is the, okay, this is the item. That's the exact item. We must have, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that must have been, so the item 1.5, that was deferred. So that's the one they're dealing with. So this is, yeah, yeah, so I've, that's the next. But then, but I'll do it another sheet. So, Councillor Dubinow, are you able to take the chair on this particular item? I, I can if you want me to, Your Worship. Yes, I think you should. Um, it's already on the floor. You were the, you were the mo original mover. Uh, or no, Councillor Noyes was the original mover, you seconded it, but I have a conflict on that, so if you would be good enough to deal with 1.5 in those minutes. Yes, I would, Your Worship. So uh, the report that we have this evening, it is uh, item 1.5 from CAO 28 LC 2020-21. That's uh, land matter um, from December 2nd, 2021 land committee meeting, um, sorry, land committee meeting minutes um, being uh, recommendation number two regarding 1799 Niagara River Parkway. That's already on the floor this evening. Um, uh, do any members of the council have any questions or comments regarding this? Councillor McDermott. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I would ask that we could move this to our next April meeting. Um, Being that uh, the other party is uh, out of the country. Um, and I think, um, I mean, we, we had a, an email from them as well as uh, the, uh, the neighbor. Um, so I think um, because of the fact that it could be a rather expensive thing, should council side with the land matters uh, deal that we, we hear uh, that the rest for the resident for 1799 Niagara River. Thank you, Councillor McDermott. Do we have a, um, we need a seconder in, in oh. Yeah. Councillor McDermott? Let's see, what's the next? Is it, are you, are you talking a regular council meeting? Well, because we need the delegation, right? So it'd have to be the regular council meeting. Let's go to the 11th. So April 11th? Yes. OK. Um, Madam Clerk, we need a seconder for that because we're in uh, regular council. Uh, do we have a seconder for that? Councilor Zanko? Um, are there any questions or comments with regard to the timing? We're going to uh, the Councilor McDermott has uh, moved that we postpone this until April 11th. Any uh, questions, comments with regard to timing? So I'm seeing none, so I'll call the question then. All those in favor? So that's none opposed, so that's carried. Um, Your Worship, did you declare a conflict? I did declare a conflict with respect to the next report, and it was with respect to item 317. Uh, 317? Which, which is the same matter. So if you want to deal with that, and then you can give me back the chair. Or why don't we do this? Let's deal with all of the minutes except item 317, and then I'll give the chair back to you. So, Councillor Zanko, you have the resolution for the land committee minutes of February the 10th, 2022, which you can move with the exception of item 3 and in brackets 17, for which I've declared a, a conflict. Okay. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Butler, that CAO 03 LC 04 2022 land matters February 10th, 2022 land committee meeting minutes. The council receives the February 10th, 2022 land committee meeting minutes attached to Appendix 1 to report number CAO 03 LC 04 2022. And further, that council approves the recommendations contained in Appendix 2. 
Are there any questions or comments with respect to those minutes with the exception of item 317? Councillor Luberts? Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor Redekop. Um Just on the, uh, let me see on page four, item six. Purchase of 390 Derby Road. Um, we did receive, uh, I know that uh, there was a request to just uh, sell the land to uh, Mr. Smith, but now we have um, um, received some correspondence from other people that are interested. And um, I know that Mr. Smith, I think he did say that he'd be willing to pay the appraised price. But when was the last appraisal done on that property? Mr. Cookett? Through your mayor to the councillor, it's, it's a recent appraisal that was just completed within the last few months. Okay, so and now we have other people that are interested. So what... I guess my question to staff is what would be our options now that we've got some requests? Mr. Cookett, is that uh, something you can respond to? Sure, through your worship to the council. There's, there's various options. Uh, we could continue on down the road of sole sourcing it to Mr. Smith, or we could sole source it to the other interested party, or we could put it up for sale as uh, full marketable land for all to bid on. Councilor Luberts? So how would we go about, um, I see the land, in the land minutes, they recommended that, uh, that it be sold on the market in previous minutes from the land committee. And I understand um, Mayor Redekop's uh, thoughts that, you know, Mr. Smith has put a lot of money into Crystal Beach without the help of anybody else, but um, other people have invested in Crystal Beach as well, or in Fort Erie for that matter. And I, I don't know that I can agree to uh, sole sourcing it to somebody. Uh, I appreciate all the, all the investments that Mr. Smith has put into Crystal Beach. But uh, I think Mr. Smith has also been well rewarded for uh, his re investments. So I don't know if we need a report from staff with our options or if we can just go with the, um, the uh, just have the option of selling it on the market and allowing other people to bid on it. Councilor Luberts, the, um, the minutes don't uh, direct anything with respect to 390 Derby Road. There is further down on the agenda a memorandum that we received from Mackenzie Cece, and she outlines the background with respect to the matter and uh, gives an indication of what Part 8 of the sale of land policy says, uh, makes reference to Part 6 of the um, uh, policy, the land sale sale of land policy as well. So we do have that information and probably the best form to discuss this further would be when we get to Ms. Cece's memorandum under new business uh, and inquiries. Yeah, okay, we can deal with it then. Um, I guess my second question is, uh, there was a request to purchase a piece of property on Lincoln Road Whereabouts on Lincoln Road was this? I didn't see a map here. Mr. Cooker, do you recall that? I apologize. I do not recall where that is. I don't know if Mr. Walsh does or Mr. Jensen. Yeah, what page is that on, Councillor Luberts? Maybe. Same page. Uh, item nine, page four, request to purchase zero. 16255 Lincoln Road West. 
Yeah, I'm not exactly sure where that is, but um, there is another appraisal that's being, according to this, there's another appraisal that's being obtained. And that could have been because there was a problem with respect to the initial appraisal. Um, so what we can do is have uh, staff let uh, members of council know where that property is located. Yeah, and if I could too, Mayor Redekop, when we get the minutes from the land committee, maybe some extra work, but it, it'd be preferable that when we're talking about a piece of property that uh, we do the same thing we did here with 390 Derby Road. We show on a map where the property is in the future. Yeah, could do that or either make reference to where it's located um, within, you know, if it's at an intersection or the closest intersection, something of that nature. For sure. Something like that, yeah. Give us an idea. Yeah. Anything further, Councillor Luberts? Uh, no, I don't think I had anything else in these minutes. Okay. Any other members of council? If not, then I'll call the question. All those in favor of the land committee minutes with the exception of item 317. Opposed? That is carried. Uh, Councillor Zanko, then, could you... Sorry, I'm going to move, give the chair to Councillor Dubinow, and then he's going to ask you to do item 317. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Councillor Zanko, could you uh, move that uh, with item 317, please? Sure. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor um, Butler, CEO 03LC04-2022, the Land Committee Matters, February 10th, 2022, Land Committee Land Committee Meeting Minutes, Item 7 dash, or Item 3 dash 17. Thank you, Councillor Zanko. Um, any members of Council have any questions or comments? Seeing none, so I'll call the question. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. And I hand the chair back to you, Your Worship. Thank you very much, Councillor Dubinow. That takes us then to new business and inquiries, and the first resolution we have is Councillor McDermott. Thank you, Worship. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Dubinow, that Council will hold a closed session meeting at 5.30 p.m. on March 2nd, 2022, at which the matter of Chief Administrative Officer recruitment will be considered and further that the said meeting is to be is closed to the public pursuant to section 239-2B of the Municipal Act 2001 personnel matters about an identifiable individual including municipal or local board employees and sec section 239-2D of the Municipal Act 2001 labor relations or employee negotiations and further that comes Council waives section 4.7E of Council's Rules of Procedure Bylaw number 36-2016 as amended with respect to the said meeting. Thank you. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? None opposed. That is carried. The uh, second item on the um, agenda is the memorandum from Ms. Cece that we just discussed. And... Um, there is no specific action for that, but if someone wanted to move some, something under here, they could. Councillor, Councillor Butler, you had your hand up, and then Councillor Luberts. I just, I, I had a question uh, with respect to this. Um, we didn't, I don't believe we soul searched um, Mr. Um, Smith, is that his name? Sorry. Bill Smith, um, I don't believe we soul searched him. I think he approached us. Did he not? Yeah. So we haven't. Yeah, I think Councillor um, Lubitz was thinking that we'd be we would be sole sourcing it or selling it to one individual. Oh. No, Mr. The memo is quite clear that Mr. Smith has been asking for some period of time, over ten years, I think, uh, for uh, what the town is going to do with this piece of property, um, and that's referred to in the memo. So he came, he yeah. came forward to the town. The question is whether how the property is now going to be sold now that council has now that the land committee is recommending it be sold. Right, but um, he's been after this piece of property for ten years. Nobody else has come forward until just recently. Um, right. 
should it would it be in bad taste to give him the priority, especially since he he has been requesting this for a period of ten years and he's willing to pay market value for it? Well, I guess that's a matter of who who's making the um, decision. In order to do it, in order to sell the property to a specific buyer. Mm -hmm. Part eight of the sale of land policy would have to be waived. Is that correct, Mr. Cookett? That is absolutely correct. Okay. So council would have to move to waive um, that policy in order to sell it to any one specific individual. Otherwise, because it's marketable property, that uh, part of the sale of land policy applies, and ordinarily the property would be sold through um, the open market. Um, I, I don't know how the rest of council feels about it. Um, I, you know, whether he gets it, somebody else gets it is really not, um, my issue. My issue is that the request has been in for 10 years and nobody has come forward until just recently. And, um, and is that, is that fair to the individual who has been waiting patiently and agreeing to pay full market price? For that property. So I'd like to move that um, we waive part eight of the land policy. Can I do that? You can do that with <laughs> yeah. a view to selling the property to Phil Smith for fair market right. value? For fair market value, yes. And if he chooses not to at that point, then it goes up for sale. There's seconder for that motion, Councilor McDermott. Um, questions or comments? I, I had, in fact, I've got a question. Um, this parcel, and maybe Mr. Cookett, you can, you can shed some light on this. This parcel was not identified in the original parking study as being part of the parking inventory for Crystal Beach, according to Ms. CC's. And it, it wasn't identified in the Crystal Beach secondary plan, to my knowledge, as being a, a lot to be utilized for parking. From what I recall, that is correct. Um, so this is marketable because it could be constructed on. Yes, yes, it can be for sure. Okay. Any uh, any other questions or comments, Councillor Zanko, and then Councillor Luberts. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I I actually support this um, motion fully. Um, you know, uh, as Councillor Butler had said, Mr. Smith has been after this property for quite some time. He owns the adjacent property. And the fact of the matter is he's been investing in this area far, far before anyone else has been investing in this area. So I really do think that it's the fair thing to do. And um, I'm happy that Councillor Butler brought this forward. I was intending to if she hadn't. Um, so I fully support this. Thank you. Councillor Luberts. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Mayor Redekop. Um Number one, um, we might want to recall a few years back, there was a, a gentleman in the uh, Bidwell Parkway area off of Dominion Road. He had been request, requesting to purchase a piece of property for years as well. And uh, Mr. Teal. And um, the fact is, ironically, um, we didn't sell it to Mr. Teal. Mr. Smith, same person, came along and offered to purchase it. And uh, this council decided that they would sell it to Mr. Smith. And uh, so Mr. Teal, even though he asked years before Mr. Smith came along, uh, this council said, no, we'll sell it to uh, someone else. And secondly, uh, if we go back to this property a few years ago, uh, Mr. Smith uh, really wasn't interested in purchasing the property. What Mr. Smith was requesting, and Mr. Cookett, you were involved in it, if you remember, 
he wanted the town to make it a parking lot. And uh, staff had no intentions of making a parking lot at the time. So, uh, but if that's the way our policy is going to be that, you know, you have to be in this town a long time. And if you invest money, you're gonna be uh, second on the list for property that's available for sale. Then, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty sad in my eye because the uh, people that uh, are looking to put an offer in on the property, maybe, is uh, they just purchased their property in the town of, in, in Crystal Beach, and uh, they uh, they need parking, and that's what they would like to use the property for. So I think it's just fair that uh, we uh, give everybody uh, the equal opportunity to purchase property in the town of Fort Erie. But I guess if we're... Uh, going to change our policy and depends on how much money you spend in this town, then I guess, but I'm not going to support the motion. Councilor Luberts, can you, do you recall when the Bidway Park, Bidwell Parkway uh, situation arose? I don't recall that offhand. I can't remember when it, uh, can't remember exactly, but uh, it was uh, Mr. Teal. Would he that lived Door and he wanted to purchase. He would. He'd been after the town for years trying to purchase that property. And town of Fort Erie and the council decided no, they'll sell it to Mr. Smith. Do you know if that was this council or the previous council or one before? Well, it was the council of the town of Fort Erie. You're not sure which one. No. Okay. Thank you, um, Councilor Dubino. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Um, just a, a quick comment. I, I, I appreciate um, what Councillor Butler and Councillor Zanko had to say. Um, I, I do agree with the sentiment expressed. Um, Mr. Smith has repeatedly come to the town requesting at least an opportunity to purchase this property. Um, the last time he did, I, I think there was some question regarding the, the parking study, um, and he's been very patient. Um, just to some earlier comments about you know policies and and um, you know land sales, um, you know certainly we do have that policy, but we as a municipal council we have the ability to waive that policy to ensure that the land that we own that we're going to disperse to uh, individuals, um, so that we have a level of control over that. And as we saw earlier this evening, um, there there was even a, a discussion about. A conveyance um, agreement so so we do have that right I, I just have one question um, I'm not sure who to direct it to though and uh, I'm just wondering if if we do proceed with waiving the land sale policy um, and uh, offer the property to mr. Smith at fair market value um, maybe I'm, I'm getting into legal questions or, or anything, you know, along those lines, and it might not be appropriate for open session, but I'm just wondering, would we be prejudiced in any way if we did that? I'm just not sure who would answer that question, and if it's even a, a simple one that can be answered right now. Well, I think that would be, that would be a question that the lawyer would have to answer, and, um, you know, I don't know if the other party that expressed interest in this uh, property recently is is willing to pay what the fair market value price is, which is two hundred seventy five thousand dollars. But um, I wonder if it would be appropriate to perhaps put defer this to March the twenty first, which is the next regular co next council meeting. It's a council and committee meeting, but we could defer it to March twenty first to a find out an answer to your question, Councillor Dubinow, and b find out if the other interested party is prepared to pay $275,000, um, perhaps is, perhaps not. Um, Councillor Butler, um, it's your motion. Are you interested in deferring this, or would you prefer to deal with it this evening? Yeah, no, you know what? I, I think um, deferring it is perfectly fine, and um, it's better to be armed with information than not, so I'm good with it. Okay, so that would be a deferral to March the 21st, and uh, we need a mover for a motion to do that.
You do what? I don't think we want to withdraw it. I think we want to defer it. Yeah. We want to, we want to postpone this motion. It hasn't been dealt with, but it's on the floor. So um, we would need a motion to postpone to March the 21st. Um, Councilor Dubinow is prepared to move that. Is there a seconder for that? Councilor McDermott? Okay, so that is uh, non-debatable. It would be a, a postponement of the motion to March the 21st, Council and Committee meeting. All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. That then takes us to the addendum uh, because we had a couple of other items. One is, the first one is a response to inquiry and this um, relates to the motion that Councillor Luberts had brought in last June regarding the new um, bylaw and concerns about animal rescue groups. Mr. Cooker, were you going to be reading this in? I believe uh, Mr. Herlovich. Yep. Mr. Herlovich. So what we do in these scenarios is we have a, an inquiry by a member of council and then we have a response that the a staff member typically reads into the record. So, yeah, Mr. Mayor, I'm just trying to get that, um, that memo in front of me. If you can call up the, the um, there was an email that sent the addendum out earlier today. Yes, I did see that. Yep. And this is the, this is the first item, uh, this is item C, response to inquiry. And I'm there now. And... Okay, um, and I believe this is the, uh, the recommendation here that town staff are currently consulting with designated groups as requested to prepare a report. Right, so what we do, Mr. What we do typically, Mr. Hilovich, is refer back to the beginning of that. So the inquiry is by okay. Councillor Luberts and yes. the nature of the inquiry, et cetera. Okay, okay. Um, inquiry by Councillor Luberts. Nature of the inquiry is bylaw to regulate, control, and register animal rescue groups. A resolution by moved by Councillor Lubritz, seconded by Councillor Noyes. And now there be it resolved. The Council of the Town of Fort Erie directs staff to consult the Fort Erie SPCA, local rescue groups, foster home volunteers, other municipalities, and further that the consultation process staff bring forward a report to Council with recommendations regarding the development of the bylaw to regulate, control, and register animal groups it was carried. Response is that town staff are currently consulting with the designated groups as requested to prepare a report to forward to council with recommendations regarding development of the bylaw to regulate animal and register animal control groups. That report will be submitted for the April council meeting. Thank you. Are, are there any questions or comments with respect to that response? Councillor Luberts? Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Redekop. Hope I lost everybody here. Um, yes, uh, thank you very much, and I'm glad to see the report is coming. But just an uh, just, uh, inquiry from... Uh, I don't know if it would be uh, Mr. Cookett, but uh, it says in the response that staff are currently consulting with the with the groups, but then on, at the bottom it says that the response is completed. Yeah, that that's actually that should be yeah the status of that, Councillor Lubert's actually should be ongoing because the report. 
in my view, it should be ongoing as opposed to completed. And Mr. Cookett agrees with that. So that report will be coming forward in April. Um, so you're correct. It's ongoing, not completed. Okay. All right. And then at the beginning of it, um, not that it matters, but I think uh, for the clerk, it might be something for accuracy. Uh, it says the date of the inquiry, right? And it was a council meeting of June 21st. It was, it was actually I mean, January. When the uh, motion was brought forward. Yeah. It was June 21st, 2021. The inquiry was uh, just a few weeks ago, I think. It was. It was January 24th. Whether it matters or not to the clerk, I don't know, but. It was. It was January 24th, Councillor Lubert, and, and that should be, I think, the date that should be inserted there. So you're correct on that as well. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, any, anything and further on that you. item? I want to thank staff for the, uh, the response. Okay. Uh, and then, Mr. Hurlovich, you have the uh, second response to inquiry, and this is mm -hmm. with respect to Councillor Zanko's inquiry the same evening, January 24th, 2022. Let me just bring that one up as well. And so the inquiry, this one says dated January 24th, 2022, inquiry by Councillor Zanko. Nature of the inquiry, Councillor Zanko inquired with Mr. Butler about the animal control bylaw it was recently changed, specifically with regard to approval of rescue organizations. In the past, the pound keeper would approve the rescue organizations, but it was discussed that that poses a bit of a conflict due to the adoption portion. When the animal control bylaw was rewritten, it was added that the pound keeper or the licensed agent, which is the town of Port Erie, can approve rescue organizations based upon ensuring an inspection of basic care and shelter. She asked if that is something that is being implemented as she knows of an individual that is interested in considering a rescue organization in the future. And she wanted to get the confirmation that, that person can come into the town to get approval. Mr. Butler responded that he would have to confer with the coordinator, law enforcement, Mr. McCaffrey, Mayor Redekop, and asked if Mr. Cookett could uh, had, or excuse me, if Mr. Cook had had any insight into this. Mr. Cook had advised that he believes that there haven't been any licenses issued and would have to check as well. Mayor Redekop advised that this would be referred to bylaw enforcement who would be able to, uh, to provide the information uh, on this to Mr. Cookett and he would leave it with Mr. Cookett. Response is that all facets of licensing under the animal welfare bylaw number 73-2021 is being provided through the pound keeper Port Erie SPCA. The town has not taken any steps to implement licensing of rescue organizations. So um, my understanding is that this is going to be something that will be included in Mr. McCaffrey's report that we're going to be receiving in April. Is that your understanding, Mr. Hurlovich? Yes, sir, that, that is correct. Uh, in as much as um, well, the bylaw does speak to foster, rescue foster uh, licenses. There are no regulations, no rules, nothing to uh, govern that. So we would be bringing forward some recommendations for council's consideration at that April meeting. Thank you. Any questions or comments about the response to that inquiry, Councillor Zanko and then Councillor Butler? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, just a comment. Uh, I understand that there will be some um, some suggestions coming forward in the April report. I am a little disappointed because we did rewrite that bylaw to ensure that the pound keeper or the license agent uh, could authorize rescues due to that conflict. Um, so just wanted to point that out. I, I understand um, based on this response that we haven't moved forward with that, um, but I think it is important. So I am looking forward to that uh, recommendation coming forward in April. Right. Councillor Butler. Yes. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I just wanted to uh, reiterate, actually, uh, Councillor Zanko said everything that I was going to say. I wonder, though, if we could do some housekeeping with the current bylaw and remove the terminology rescue foster and just leave it at foster so that there's less confusion. 
Yeah, I think um, at this stage of the game, we're now, tomorrow will be March the 1st. We're going to be getting a report in April. Definitely we need to deal with this, and I, and I think that's an appropriate time to try to tidy up any of the language that deals with this. And this is really what Councillor Luberts was driving at when he brought forward his motion um, last year to try to get some clarification on this. So you're, you're absolutely correct. It is very, very unsatisfactory the way it sits right now. Anything further, Councillor Butler? Not right at this minute, thank you. So, Councillor Luberts? Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Redekop. Um Just to, uh, I, I, I'm just hoping that everybody uh, understands that when it comes to rescue groups and foster families, they're uh, two separate entities. So the problem that we're, I guess, that some people are having is the fact that in, in our, our bylaw, we, we refer to rescue fosters or foster rescue, whichever way it is. And, um, but if you look at the fostering license uh, portion of the bylaw, it does tell us that it's to respond to and it's, it's, it's meant for people that want to foster animals in their own home, specifically dogs, for the rescue group. So the rescue group brings the animals into the country or into the municipality, and then they have volunteers that foster for them. And some people are confused that when you get a foster license, you also have a rescue license, and that's not the case. And um, so I think that's what needs to be cleared up and everybody, so everybody understands that a rescue group is one thing, foster family or a foster person is another thing. And uh, you need, we do issue licenses now for, for fosters. But the confusing part of that is in order to be a foster, you have to have a letter of recommendation from a rescue group, and we don't have any regulations for rescue groups. Right, so that's why we're gonna be, we, de we need to deal with this, and um, I think all three of you are quite correct. This is very confusing, it's not very well drafted, and um, we need to get it sorted out, and Mr. McCaffrey assures me that he will do that. So we'll have to hold him to that standard. Uh, anything further on this one? If not, then are there any other items of new business or inquiries? Councillor Dubineau. Yeah, thank you, Worship. I just want to make a, bit, a quick comment on uh, something you alluded to earlier about uh, this being um, our, our CAO, Tom Cook, it's uh, last day with the town. Um, I won't repeat everything you just said. I, I think everyone um, in, in the town knows how, how much we valued his uh, work over the years. I just wanted to mention from a, a personal perspective that um, I'm, I'm a new councillor. I, I had not served on council before. Um, and, uh, you know, th this was a, a challenge for me. It was something new. And, uh, you know, to your credit, your worship, and, and the rest of council, um, you've been phenomenal, and you've taken me under your wing, and uh, you've, you've helped me to succeed and the, the town to succeed. One person who doesn't get mentioned very often is uh, the, the staff, how good they've been to me over these last three years. And uh, that, that starts at the top with Tom. And uh, he has actually been uh, great to work with. He has been remarkably patient with me on many, many occasions. Um, and I am, uh, I'm going to miss him. I'm, I'm very excited about what we're moving into and, and what comes, but uh, it, it's bittersweet because I, I'm going to miss Tom. Um, but he's not getting off the hook because we will be seeing him for breakfast on Sunday, and we've made that quite clear to him. Um, but uh, I, I just wanted to say that, Your Worship, because I, I'm, I've been the new guy here, and everyone has been wonderful. And, uh, you know, the, the, the CAO sets the tone for staff. And uh, we have a great staff, um, and uh, that, that started with Tom. And uh, he, he built a team, and whoever 
comes in has big shoes to fill, but I'm sure they'll they'll come out swimming or swinging because of of the work Tom did. So, it's just a quick comment, Your Worship, that I I just wanted to relay, and, and thank you for giving me the opportunity. It's very much appreciated. Um, apparently, Tom Cookett is universally loved. Some some people were almost brought to tears when he was leaving. Um, I don't know, Mr. Cookett, did you want to say anything? Did I give you an opportunity before, or was I waiting for this last, very last minute? I would, I would love to say something, but I'll keep it qu quick as well. Just to uh, thanks, Councillor uh, Dubineau, for your comments. Uh, just know that on Sunday mornings when we go for breakfast, I'm on a fixed income. So I, I expect you and uh, Councillor McDermott to pick up the tab. Um, no, I, I just want to say thanks to Mayor and Council for giving me the opportunity to be the CAO and, and guide this corporation over the last seven years. Um, you're a remarkable group. You've done wonderful things. I should say we have do done wonderful things, uh, Council, uh, staff, uh, myself. I think we all should be very proud. Um, I've, I'm repeating myself from what was said last week. Uh, I want to thank Jonathan Jansen and Kelly Walsh and Kira and Alex, uh, the directors, and I also want to thank, uh, I didn't mention this the other day, but I want to, a big thanks to our senior staff and Carol, Bev, Janine, Kelly Davis, Ed, our fire chief, uh, Jennifer, Alice, Tammy, for your support and dedication over the past seven years. Uh, I, I feel the town is in a great financial position with exceptional growth and exceptional staff. I have truly enjoyed my 15 years at the town and wish you continued success. Thank you. Has it been 15 years? Yes. <laughs> Seemed more like 20. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, you know, all of the counselors feel the same way, Mr. Cookett, and, you know, without going around the table and giving everybody a chance. Um, yeah, we, we, we're, we're sad to see you go. Um, it provides um, new horizons for you, and I guess whether we like it or not, it'll be new horizons for us. But um, we, will, we will think of you... Um, I'm sure frequently as we move forward with the things that we're going to do and um, when Odette gets tired of you being around, uh, just have her give me a call. We'll find something for you to do. <laughs> um, anyone else um, with respect to new business or inquiries? Mr. Hurlovich, I I'm not sure if you're familiar with the metal fence issue or not. But I had some conversation with Mr. Jennings about a metal fence. Currently, there's a property owner that has a brand has a metal fence, uh, which is prohibited in Fort Erie because when we crafted the uh, fence bylaw, we had in mind a particular particular fence was made out of scrap metal, and it um, certainly was not sightly, and it wasn't certainly appropriate for a fence. We now have a fence in town that's made with brand new, looks like corrugated um, metal, with um, and it's spaced between metal um, uh, standards. It's a very attractive fence. So I don't know if you've spoken to Mr. Jennings about this issue or, or not, but I was going to be asking him to uh, look into providing advice to uh, council about an amendment to that fence bylaw to provide something that would... Um, permit uh, new metal um, subject to approval of the um, staff member. Um, so what I think I'm going to do, in the meantime, there is an outstanding order, I believe. So could you follow that up and make sure that it's not pursued until we've had a chance to um, deal with this? Because I'm going to move later on that we um, ask staff to give us those recommendations so that um, there is some latitude for new uh, metal uh, that meets a particular standard uh, best uh, established by the, I think it's the chief building official who is responsible for the fence bylaw. Do you know anything about yes. this? Yeah, yes, Your Worship, I, I am familiar. Uh, Mr. Jennings and I had had a conversation on that within the last uh, seven to ten days, uh, and I will uh, speak to him tomorrow uh, regarding uh, the need for an amendment. Uh, certainly, I can understand how the bylaw came to be written, familiar with many fences where uh, portions of old appliances and other things were wired to fences, and uh, certainly we did not want to perpetuate that in Fort Erie, um, but certainly did not anticipate that fences might be made out of new uh, corrugated material, as you mentioned. So we 
uh, try and amend the bylaw to address that. So then perhaps what I'll do is I'll just leave that with you and the Planning and Development Services Committee, and uh, perhaps the next meeting there'll be some discussion about that. Um, thank you, okay. Mr. Hurlovich. Um, also, I just wanted to ask, uh, Mr. Walsh, we have a, I, I saw out recently a truck with uh, someone filling some potholes. We have a, surprisingly, an abundance of potholes. Uh, understand this has been a particularly bad winter across Ontario. Do we have, um, do we have a protocol or, or a program that deals with this at this time of the year? Uh, Mr. Mayor, we're always on the uh, the hunt for them, and we don't have to hunt very hard, as as you note. Um, for the public, if they if they think they've uh, got a pothole that we don't know about, certainly phone it into the main desk. We'll create a, uh, a customer relation management item CRM, and it'll go to our crew and uh, put on the list. We do fill our potholes sort of by area, so if you don't get it on day one, we're hoping you get it at least within the next few days. Okay, um, Rose Hill Road? <laughs> Take a different road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's great. So any members of council, if, you, if you've got, um, if, you're, if you hear from residents or if you're driving around and you notice, please get some information into Mr. Walsh. And then finally, I just wanted to alert council to um, the fact that I raised at a regional development charges committee meeting the other night the um, concerns expressed by some residents, and I think some of you have also expressed it, about the access into Crystal Beach uh, and into Ridgeway and Crystal Beach from the Queen Elizabeth Highway. We have um, actually asked for a traffic study for Gorham Road because it's the sole major thoroughfare into Crystal Beach. Um, I've raised the prospect of the need for a, another point of access whether it's from uh, the um, uh, Netherby Road or whether it's from uh, Garrison Road into that area because as we re experience more growth, it's going to be very, very difficult. Uh, this was an issue that was actually raised. Councillor Butler and I were at a meeting last Thursday evening, I believe it was, and this was raised, and it's certainly a valid concern because the growth that's taking place in Crystal Beach and that will take place along the Gorham Road corridor is going to require something further. And I would imagine that development charges are uh, created specifically for this type of project that would meet, have to meet the, the uh, growth that takes place in a community. So just kind of um, putting that out there for you folks, and uh, it's something that we're going to need to be looking at down the road. Are there any other items of new business or inquiries? If not, then um, Councillor Butler, you had a motion, but that is being postponed to March the 28th, I see. Okay, are there any notices of motion? So I'm gonna bring forward a notice of motion uh, for the March 28th meeting uh, to deal with the Ontario Land Tribunal. Um, I, I'm sympathetic to the resolution from the city of Sarnia and a number of other municipalities which have also passed similar resolutions, but I think we need uh, I think we need to have some definition of how um, how we would deal with uh, a situation where there was no specific appeal um, for planning decisions made, whether it's through uh, better guidance from the province or whether it's um, some mechanism where uh, aggrieved parties could commence a legal action if they felt that was appropriate. But certainly the Ontario Land Tribunal, I think, is in my view, problematic. So that'd be March the 28th, Madam Clerk. Are there any other notices of motion? If not, then we'll go to um, the consideration of bylaws. Are there any bylaws that anyone wishes removed from the package? If not, then Councillor Dubina, you have first and second reading for the bylaw package. I do, Your Worship. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor McDermott that the bylaw package containing 14 2022 to exempt certain uh, lots in Plan M65 from part lot control, lots 1 through 35 and lots 38 through 44, Beachwalk 
south of uh, Michener Road and east of Schooley Road, Mars Homes, Crystal Beach Incorporated, 15 2022, to authorize the entry into a grant agreement with Her Majesty the Queen and Right of Ontario as represented by the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, 16 2022, to authorize entry into an amending agreement to the Niagara Region Courts Intermunicipal Agreement Amendment 2 with the Niagara Region for the Vision Zero Road Safety Program, 17-2022 to adopt the general capital budget and the general levy operating budget for the Town of Fort Erie for the year 2022, 18-2022 to assume primary services in the Park Lane Place Subdivision Plan 59M452, 19-2022 to authorize the sale of lots 468 and 598 plan 480 and lots uh, sorry zero bidwell parkway and lots 599 600 601 plan 480 zero richmond avenue to sean Schertzing and laurie Schertzing. 20-2022 to amend zoning bylaw number 12990 as amended 323 central avenue npg planning solutions incorporated 21-2022 to appoint Jonathan Jansen as interim chief administrative officer and deputy clerk for the town of Fort Erie and to repeal bylaw number 78 2015. And finally, 22-2022, to accept and declare lands as public highway on the south side of Nye Road, southeast corner of Nye Road and Centralia Avenue, 2751 Nye Road. Is given first and second reading. All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. That bylaw package is on the floor for any questions or comments. Madam Clerk, I wonder if I could refer you to bylaw 19 uh, in paragraph one of that bylaw. I'm sorry that I didn't ask you about this before. That, um, the last couple of lines where it talks about properties merging in title, I'm sorry. I think it would be a, the, maybe it's something that you could, I could get you to look at before we sign it. Um, it's just a, a question about the reference to the town legally merging with the town's abutting lands. I did look at that very clearly um, when staff prepared this, and I did kind of struggle with it as well. But at the end of the day, I did decide that what the uh, full intent here is for all of the town lands to merge with all of the applicants' lands as one. Okay, and that, that full was parcel. what I, yeah, that, that was the interpretation that I thought might be. It's, yeah. And, and difficult to read, and obviously for me, difficult to understand, but I appreciate that. Okay. If there are no questions or comments with respect to any of the bylaws, then Councillor Luberts, you have the resolution for third and final reading. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Mayor Redekop. I'll do the seconder. Councillor McDermott. Councillor McDermott, thank you. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor McDermott, the bylaws 14 2022, 15 2022, 16 2022, 17 2022, 18 2022. 19, 20, 22, 20, 20, 22, 21, 20, 22, and 22, 20, 22 are given for the final reading. We signed by the mayor and the clerk under the corporate seal. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. Councillor Butler, you have the resolution for first and second reading of the confirmatory bylaw. I do. Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Zanko that bylaw number 23-2022 to confirm the actions of Council at its special and Council uh, meetings held on February 28th, 2022 is given first and second reading. Are there any, sorry, all those in favour? None opposed, that is carried. Councillor Zanko, third and final reading. Yes, thank you. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Butler, that bylaw number 23-2022 is given third and final reading to be signed by the mayor and the clerk under the corporate seal. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favour? None opposed. That is carried. Scheduling of meetings. There is a diversity and inclusion coalition meeting Wednesday, March the 2nd at 1 o'clock. 
there is an emergency operations committee meeting uh, Thursday morning at 9. And uh, yeah, that's it for me. Anyone else? Then, um, Councillor Dubina, I'm going to go to you for a motion to adjourn. Yes, Your Worship. Yes, Your Worship. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor McDermott. The Council adjourns at 8.40 p.m. to reconvene into a regular meeting of Council on March 28, 2022. All those in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you all.